I'd like to go for is soul transportation. So I read well, every one of you interest, okay? So the spectrum is a wide range, but what, what you like to do is what's going on in Seoul? So what you see in Seoul is what was the, uh, the before, okay? So I'd like to show you the beforehand. So some kind of, what kind of motivation do we make Seoul like, make like this? And what will be the future, okay? So I'd like to explain about the so, uh, as you know, the population a little over than 10 million. Okay, so when I say 42 percent means as a as a total as a metropolitan area, the population 25 million. However, as a 10.5 million occupies 42 percent of the population of this whole metro. But the area base here is the metropolitan uh, this big, but Seoul is only this big. It takes only 5%. That means what I like to emphasize here is Seoul is very, very crowded. It's a highly de high density developed. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Seoul, I said internal, internal traffic in Seoul, the in and in inside to inside makes 23 million trips a day. Seoul makes 32 million trips every day. But internal trip is, I mean the inside or internal trip is 23 trips or in and out or out or in makes 9 million trips uh, every day, I said, every day. But the metropolitan area is a 53 million. So number of vehicles, went up about 25% in 10 uh, years period. This is the metro line. Okay, take a look at this graph here. We have, uh, by chronological order, we have three different phases here. Okay, it starts from 1974, we start the, this line, okay, about the CBD line. And the second phase, we, we complete the yellow line here. Now. About year 2000, basically the Seoul metro line is completed. Okay, so I I like to explain why we did like this. So this is the skeleton of the very very important framework of the Seoul transportation. Okay, and okay, take a look at the graph here from 1996. Okay, the red thing is a subway. And the blue, uh, the bus is blue. Okay, the mode share of the bus is a little higher than that of the subway. Okay? In 1996, and year 2002, it jumped up. Uh, about subway takes about 35 percent. Bus went down about 25 something else. Take a look at. This graph again. So year 2000 uh, here, that's the year of the we, when we complete what uh, metro system. So after metro system, before metro uh, the uh, the uh, the second uh, the phase two metro system, as uh, the bus is higher, mode share. Uh, the ND subway, but year 2002, wow, it's a dramatic change. And they stayed about 35% for now. And car, yeah, car stays about year 2002, 25, 26, 27, so it's about 26, 27, it stays about the same. And uh, Subway stays about the same. What about the bus? So, bus was dropped down in year 2002. And since this is the dot line, will be what? Year 2004. What if we didn't do that? Okay. That's the projection, future projection. Of the, uh, so, at that time, we have to do something. So, so oh, it's a it's very, very, it's kind of emergency. That's what we felt. And 
now uh, bus and subway, we said public transportation. So here, year 2004, these two add them up about 62 uh, percent. But if year 2009, uh, these two add them up about 63 percent. But there's only one percent difference, 62. 63%, but the 1% is uh, uh, the small number. So I would say the 1% is not a, a little number. As a, a transportation policy maker, it's a very, very big number because 1% times 23 million trips every day, not a week, not a month, not a year, every day. Okay? That means whatever you, we invest lots of lots of time and money, the share of a, a subway system is not very changeable. Okay? It stays about the same in 35% range. But take a look at the car too. Okay, it stays about 24, 26, 27, what, what kind of a program you adopt. However, the bus could be changed okay, because the service level of a bus was very, very poor at that time. Okay? Let's go over three different phases. One is build infrastructure, okay? road and rail, parking lot, whatever. At that time, the motto or the goal of the transportation policy is the more the better. Okay? <laughs> the more, whatever, uh, the port or road or bus or whatever. So I say that there's two rabbits. One is demand, the other is what? Supply. So uh, who's running fast? <laughs> Always at that time, demand. The graph of demand is uh, continuous, right? But the supply is discrete. Jump and jump. When you build a road, we get a certain amount of the capacity, so it's supply went up. So when you uh, join, the, open the bridge, it goes up. And think like that. It's a discrete and jump. It's a grab here. Let's say it's a for demand, and supply goes this way. Okay, this way. So, but between uh, this part. Because uh, supply is lower, or the demand is much higher than the, uh, the supply. So what happened? After year 2000, we think about public transportation reform. Okay? So exclusive medium bus lane, so integrate transfer system. And at that time, we developed, or well, not in Korea, but uh, it, as a... Um, uh, uh, the global ITS is developed at that time. So we can use the ITS, like a GPS system or communication techniques and those kind of things. And now in Seoul, we're thinking about the human-oriented transportation. Okay? So mobility for what? And what about the handicaps? What about the elderly? And uh, things like that. What about the workers? Okay? Okay, so new era of Seoul transportation. Bus system before the reform, I mean the year, 2000, uh, year 2004, but, uh, about year 2002, because we prepared about a couple of years. So I said the bus, bus route was so complicated and centralized or in particular lines. I mean the CBD, you see? those are like money-making routes. Okay? And look, the company was small and low willingness to invest. There's no money to invest. And the operation was slow, but slow is okay. But not on time. <laughs> that means uh, it's a very, okay, it's a poor service. And if drivers is a poor welfare, uh, on, uh, sometimes uh, if he like uh, uh, issued the uh, speeding violation, whatever. So he has to pay by his pocket money. And bus users reduced. And as a company point of view, the revenue of the bus company is reduced too. 
uh, and bus route choice uh, was limited. Okay, so for the as a it's a private company. I mean the bus company. Then if we maintain as a company, what? It's two things. Uh, more passengers, or if passengers is reduced, what? The other is you have to raise the fare. Okay? So the raised bus fare is not a accounting or, a, or the financial analyze, whatever. Yes, we do. We analyze the, uh, the financial things, everything. There's a pressure of raised fare. And as a result, the bus service went down. Okay? So as a passenger side, just imagine. Okay? So think about here. So passenger who, who would like to try to uh, get on the bus or the one in the bus, what they fear? How can I get off? <laughs> and wow, it's, a, it's like a nightmare, okay? Passenger side, I said, uncomfortable. What about the uh, bus driver? Yeah, it's very difficult to pay attention. And what about uh, the bus attendant? She looks happy? No, it's a, it's a hard job. What about the city officer? That's uncomfortable. They knew what's going on in the field. But how can you fix it? It's very, very, it was very, very difficult. Okay? So I said, that's the uncomfortable. Please understand, even you don't imagine what it is, it happened about, let me say, about 40 or uh, 50 years ago in Seoul, actually. Okay, so to solve those kind of public transportation problems, we have some limits and problems. Uh, one is the supply and demand. I said, fast growing demand and slow <laughs> growing uh, supply. Okay, everyone understand. And uh, road construction is one of the solution. Okay, but think, Seoul is about 600 years old, old city. And if you uh, construct a new road, it's a there's not enough space available. But if you widen the road, it's possible. But think, to make a, uh, or widen the road, the major cost is, is two factors. One is that to purchase or to buy a piece of a property. Okay? The second is what? Construction cost. But some of the country is supported by the legal or uh, a regulation or things, like that. but in Seoul, it's very very difficult. One is the uh, the money even uh, is lots of lots of budget, and the second thing it it takes time. If the owner of the property don't agree, with, uh, I like to sell my property uh, for the uh, happiness of the public. There's no way. So we wait and persuade and keep talking. Uh, it's a very, very difficult way. It's a long way to go. Okay. So it's not easy, I said. And I said, what about the constru uh, road, subway construction? It's a, about more than $130 million per kilometer. It's very, very expensive too. At that time, we didn't use the digging, I mean the uh, tunnel time. It was an open cut. Uh, that means long construction time and 10 years. That means, think, if you think about the network, the road network of your city, if you uh, just adopt the rail system, what corridor would you like to take? The mostly crowded road. See, that means there's the more demands there. Yeah. The wide range of the subway construction is, is about impossible now. Okay? So at that time, we thought, so what do we have to do with this kind of dilemma and things like that? So we have the target. OK, subway, oh, now it's complete. Subway network with uh, completion of the 
the phase two. But, uh, the car, we can control with transportation demand management. Okay, there is asset supply, uh, demand first, demand and su supply. So without large investment, I mean the new road or new bus or new subway, whatever, there's a two, uh, we have to manage the, by two things. One is demand management, what he explained. And the other thing is that TSM, I said, system management, transportation system management. I mean the supply management. System management is just like that. Without major investment on the road, we change a little bit, little by little, with lane width or uh, we add up a left turn pocket. Uh, with the signalization uh, optimization, with the computer use, or the, use the sensor, or, or camera, or whatever, and with the signboard, okay, and those things. as transportation system management. Uh, so one hand, uh, supply side and system management, and demand side and demand management. Uh, but, well, uh, that's not it, okay? Uh, year 2002, 2004, we thought about where do we have to go? In which way? Okay. If you do nothing, wow, well, some kind of disaster will be coming. Uh, that's what we thought. At that time, uh, the issue was quality of life. Is this a good quality of life, living like that? Maybe most of the people say no, uh, the, the, that's not it. Uh, what about the humanity? Okay. What, the, what is the role of the government to provide the decent mobility, uh, things like that, a decent mobility, okay? And public transportation will be the answer, okay? And the system, there's a separate system we need to integrate. That's what we thought. So public transportation reform was not a choice at that time, but a must.